Well, welcome back. This is the uh, fifth of six videos exploring chapter 13 of Wheeler's most excellent textbook on uh, security risk management. And what we're going to be doing during this particular video is looking at architectural risk analysis. We're going to break it into two parts. So video five will cover the first half and then we'll get into video six, which finishes out the chapter. So the intent behind an architectural risk analysis is provide a sensible progression for determining security needs, choosing controls, and validating what decisions you make for those controls. And as you can see, it's this kind of nine-step process that we're going to go uh, through to help identify where we have gaps and controls, map out different scenarios for securing access to a control or a resource, weighing the uh, various courses of action and results, and then making informed decisions as you're going forward. And uh, we're going to do a lot of things that we've seen in previous workflows as we've gone through and done risk analysis. So we always start off with this idea of determining what assets do we have out there, what information flows do we have out there, what systems do we have out there, and we're going to look at the risk associated with that particular uh, system after identifying it and then determining what are the most sensitive information flows that we have uh, going uh, through the system. As we're doing that, we're going to look at confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability for each flow, and then calculate an overall uh, risk sensitivity for each of those flows based on that CIAA um, a risk analysis. Once we've got kind of that beginning point of what is in scope and what information flows exist out there, we're going to get into the uh, requirements phase. And this is covered in the book, uh, principally in Appendix C. Now, I've incorporated that into the next couple of slides to make sure that you've got a sense of what that actually looks like. But we're going to go through and look at our baseline security levels and what enhancements are going to be uh, needed uh, based on the, the confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability risk of sensitivity ratings that we had uh, from those information flows in the previous um, uh, uh, phase. So as we're uh, looking at these, you can see the table that I've pulled out of the book for table uh, from uh, 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 the uh, Appendix C. Uh, this first one is starting to look at security baseline levels, and we're going to start by looking at application protocol and session filtering, inspection, and validation. And as you can see, the requirements are going to be over on the left side, and they're going to be captured as a series of um, uh, different requirements. And then various controls are listed on the right that may be selected uh, to help you meet that requirement. So for example, on that first one, uh, traffic should be terminated, inspected, and reinitiated at the application uh, layer, and that's the uh, Open Standards Interface, or OSI, layer 6 and 7. And you can see that application proxy is the typical way of uh, doing that, and the diagram over on the right kind of shows you how an application uh, proxy, in the case of a web, might potentially work between uh, the client devices uh, that are out in the Internet, the corporate uh, network, and then internal uh, to the corporate network. Uh, continuing on, you can see um, we're going to move into uh, some additional requirements as we continue to go forward. And as you can see, there are a variety of technical controls over on the right of each one of these kind of explaining those. So uh, as you're going through and doing this baseline security, you would be looking at each one of those and then assessing, do I have the appropriate controls in place or do I have some other mechanism uh, of doing so? Again, you can, you can see the, the various controls that may be out there to address different components associated uh, with this. And of course, there's not only one way of doing it. There are multiple ways uh, of uh, deploying this, and you've got to get down. These are in a very general sense, but you've got to get to very specific implementations based on the functional requirements and the security baseline levels. All right, we're continuing to look at uh, different uh, components here. I'm not going to go into each one of these because, candidly, that would lead to about an hour-long uh, video. 
Uh, in class, we actually will split off and, and take one or two and discuss them as we're going through. And so here's the fifth of six slides that are actually uh, looking at these different components. And there's the last one, um, uh, addressing the different controls, uh, linking back to the functional requirements in that baseline review. So once we've done that, we've got the kind of um, uh, requirements that we're going uh, to have. Um, and then we move into uh, doing a selection of actual controls. So now we're going back through and looking at confidentiality through, this is now looking at the enhancements that we might do uh, on top of that. And we're, we're going to split it out by confidentiality. And again, there are possible controls that we could implement uh, to meet those conf uh, confidentiality requirements over on the left-hand slide. And as you can see, there are a series of five different slides or five different tables that list out various controls that you could put into play. So choosing that bottom one down there, employ strong multi-factor authentication mechanisms to implement unauthorized disclosure of information. So if you've got that as a functional requirement, you're going to have to put in a two-factor system, which means you're going to have to buy some hardware, you're going to have to buy actually some software to actually do that implementation, put a policy in place to require it, put in an education, training, and awareness program so people know how to do uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, normally, that's not on your cell phone. So while, again, I'm kind of breezing through this, don't underestimate the amount of work that's associated uh, with uh, implementing uh, each one of these functional requirements. Uh, it's not something you're going to do in 30 days or a year or two years or three years. You, you, you build this up over time, and as you're doing it, you're going to have to build into this um, uh, policy, uh, education, awareness and training, and a technology solution that provides all of that functionality. All right, here you uh, see well, we're moving out of confidentiality into integrity. Uh, and within that, we had three uh, different uh, functional requirements and availability. Um, we've got another uh, series of requirements there uh, as well, um, and then into um, accountability. And we're continuing to kind of work through um, uh, the accountability. As you might imagine, that's a longer uh, component associated with determining uh, and making sure uh, that we have the capability to trace actions back to who actually performed uh, those actions. All right, um, that then brings us to this last slide of looking at uh, security enhancement levels and those things that we're going to need to do uh, to meet that confidentiality, integrity, availability, um, and accountability associated with enhancing the security within the system. All right, we're going to pick up in the next video on this slide, actually. So we're going to uh, pick up uh, part two of this architectural risk analysis. That first part is pretty daunting, isn't it? So we're going out in the first part and looking at the information flows, determining our baseline security levels, and then going through the confidentiality, integrity, availability, and accountability in determining our security enhancements. From there, we're going to move into control selection. But again, that's for another video. So keep on studying, keep on learning. I hope to see you in the next video as we finish out Chapter 13 of Wheeler's most excellent textbook, Security Risk Management.